As the unofficial headlining franchise of Rare, Banjo-Kazooie has weaved its way into our hearts, then broken our hearts, and subsequently rekindled our love for them. The name is consistently dropped when discussing Masterclass 3D platformers, which is impressive considering they only have two, debatably three games that fall under this genre. Following the titular duo of Brown Bear Banjo and Red Bird Kazooie, these two have been jumping, rolling, flying, shooting, and collecting since 98 and are still beloved icons in the world of gaming. But in a series where any object plastered with googly eyes is destined to die or get stashed away in a backpack, just how good can the protagonists be? What do the antagonists have to do to make you root for our heroes? And where do all the folks on the sideline fit into the puzzle? Let's find out. I'm Kyle with 1UP Binge, and this is Banjo-Kazooie Good to Evil. Starting off on the good side of the list, we're giving the top spot to Bottles. The short-sighted mole from Spiral Mountain, Bottles is the very first ally to Banjo and Kazooie's aid. In the first game, he's responsible for giving them tutorials, showing them how to perform their moves, and will later teach the duo much more useful techniques such as the Talon Trot and the Wonder Wing. A mild-mannered family mole, Bottles is very personable and kind-hearted, only becoming agitated when he butts heads with Kazooie where he delivers his fair share of snide remarks and name-calling. While he's never been on the front line, there's no denying he played a big part in Gruntilla's defeat in the first game, and when he's killed off in Tui's opening, Bottle's ghost has a halo over his head, an indication that he has a spot reserved in heaven. He gets better by the end, but if he did stay dead, we all know that Bottles would have died a very moral mole. Kudos, little buddy. Now, the silver medal for good goes to the Jinjo species. These adorable little multicolored guys live peacefully in the quiet Jinjo village, but seem to possess a surprising amount of hidden magical power. This has made them a frequent target for Gruntilda and her minions' abuse. Most notably in the first game, where she hides them all throughout the Nine Worlds, where some are left stuck in place in hazardous materials or even underwater. Just terrible. They're also willing to teach outsiders one of their favorite life lessons. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So on top of that, Banjo gets extra jiggies for rescuing them, and Gruntilda gets dealt a brutal smackdown by the Ginginator for her trouble. Next up is Banjo's little sister, Tootie. Despite being the primary source of motivation in the first game, there isn't too much to say about Tootie. Considering what we know about Banjo, it's a relatively safe assumption that she's a good kid. She shares Banjo's friendly demeanor and timid nature in the face of danger, but does it with a youthful, free-spirited edge that would be expected from a little girl. This did lead to her capture in the first game, but who knows? Maybe she grows up to be a capable fighter and adventurer just like her older brother. It's hard to say, and her lack of any physical appearances since Kazooie doesn't offer much to work with, so we'll just play it safe for now. Another character who only appears in Kazooie is Brentilda Winky Bunyan. Once again, we've got the one good egg in a family full of villainy, where Gruntilda, Mingella, and Blabelda are all witches who use their magic for evil, Gruntilda is a fairy godmother. Moreover, she seems to be directly inspired by Glinda the Good Witch from The Wizard of Oz in the same way her sisters are based off the Wicked Witch of the West. While she doesn't use her magic to help you, which seems like a sorely missed opportunity, she'll give you the dirt on Gruntilda by telling you a multitude of her most revolting, twisted secrets, which do prove to be useful during Grunty's Furnace Fun, where knowing details like what her infamous party trick is can be the difference between life and death. There is little doubt about how truly good she is, considering she's this willing to turn her back on a family member, but we can't hold too much against her considering the atrocities her sister has committed. We finally arrive at our sweetest honey, Honey Bear, Banjo. We really wanted to put Banjo much higher because he's just such a likable and earnest protagonist, but being realistic, he's done some bad stuff both as an extension of Kazooie and even on his own. Skipping ahead to the bad stuff, despite being exceptionally good in the platforming business, Banjo's pretty lazy and would much rather sleep and eat the days away. While he is hard to anger, he becomes aggressively straightforward when it happens. He's not unwilling to use deception to avoid trouble, and he along with Kazooie have ruined at least a few people's lives on their journeys such as murdering an ice cube couple in Tui by shattering the wife and pushing the husband into scalding hot water. With all that said, Banjo's good qualities far exceed his worst ones. Banjo is easygoing by nature and is good with manners, 
frequently calling others by Mr. or Mrs. and offering to help them with their problems. This does a lot to pave over otherwise rocky conversations caused by Kazooie. Let's not forget that when Kazooie goes a bit too far with her comments, Banjo tends to call her out on this behavior. And while he's not especially brave or daring at face value, he always stomachs his fear when his friends or loved ones are in danger. Be it climbing Grunty's mountain lair to save his sister, stopping Grunty's plan to sap away the entire island's life force to save everyone and bring bottles back to life, and even traveling back in time to reunite with a captured Kazooie. He hasn't necessarily done it all in the same way that characters like Mario or Sonic have, but he's done so much good in spite of the small number of games he's in, and he deserves a lot of credit. Moving on, we have another close friend and trusted ally of the Baron Bird, Mumbo Jumbo. As the self-proclaimed best shaman in all game, Mumbo was once a teacher for Gruntilda until she turned to dark magic and transformed his head into a skull. He meets Banjo and Kazooie in the first game at his skull hut in Mumbo's Mountain, and offers them his assistance when he realizes they're also after Grunty. Over time, he's become a loyal friend to Banjo and learned to tolerate Kazooie, while consistently providing his magical know-how to the problem at hand. This includes transforming them into other creatures, altering the levels in substantial ways to help the two access new areas, and letting Banjo travel back in time. Sure, he's tossed the occasional joke or insult Banjo's way depending on the transformation, but it's pretty easy to shake that off as friendly banter. It's also worth noting that he's the only character outside of Banjo and Kazooie to take an active role against Gruntilda, being fully playable in Tui, which gives him some major good points. Right behind Mumbo is his arch rival, Humbo Wumba. While Mumbo takes a more active role in Tui, Humba is introduced to meet the demand for new transformations, which are certainly more outlandish than the ones from Kazooie, which includes things like a T-Rex and a washing machine. Her most pronounced character trait is her dislike for Mumbo, as she believes her magic surpasses his, and will threaten him to leave if he enters her wigwam. Still, she does seem to be on the good side, and even manages to somewhat bury the hatchet with Mumbo by the end of the game. At last, we arrive at Banjo's partner in crime, Kazooie. Kazooie is the perfect foil for Banjo, where Banjo offers an open ear and a helping paw to anyone in need, Kazooie would much rather yap her beak and shake down the local NPCs for loot. Her love of adventure and fearless nature helps to push Banjo into the action, while Banjo's skills at damage control are the perfect counter for Kazooie's short fuse, sassy mouth, and complete lack of a filter. That said, Kazooie has gotten herself and Banjo into fights they otherwise could have avoided if she could just go one dialogue exchange without insulting somebody. For as rude and snarky as she can be, it's very clear she has a limit along with a heart underneath those fiery feathers. Despite throwing shade at almost everyone, she's never actually insulted Banjo, and the worst thing she's done to him is peck at his head whenever he stands around for too long. Banjo isn't just her mobile home, he's her best friend who she respects a great deal. The fact that she'll constantly reel herself back the moment Banjo scolds her is telling. She does enjoy helping those in need, provided it allows her to fight bad guys or go adventuring. And she even seems to have a soft spot for children. She is repulsed when Terry jokes about killing off one of her young, and even admits that an alien child is cute before catching herself and backtracking. Maybe a nest of chicks is all Kazooie needs to settle down and mellow out a bit, but I think we all love her for who she is now. Banjo's bestie, and a bit of a b-word of a Briegel. Moving into the more neutral characters, we start off with King Jingling. The gigantic king of the Jinjo village, Jingling provides a brief but memorable encounter during the opening of Tui, where he points the bear and bird in the right direction and gives them a jiggy in advance to incentivize the two to look out for missing Jinjos. His good deed is promptly followed by him getting blasted by the witch's life-sucking machine and getting turned into a mindless zombie. The one thing that kind of rubs us the wrong way, however, is that despite being the king among his kin, he never was too worried that all the Jinjos ran away, and even comments on how much he enjoys the peace and quiet. He only seems to want them brought back for an upcoming kickball tournament, and would much rather pay off complete strangers to find his people rather than get off his throne and do it himself. For his sake, we'll just chalk it up as him being a bit lazy. Up next is Bottle's brother, Jamjars. 
a no-nonsense drill sergeant who carries his brother's torch by teaching the pair plenty of advanced moves. Jam Jars only barely tolerates Banjo and Kazooie, which is a far cry from his brother. From his perspective, the former is reasonable but way too soft, while the latter is obnoxious but at least shares his enthusiasm for punishing the wicked. He doesn't show an ounce of emotion upon hearing his brother got murdered. Which, even for a tough guy in the military, is unlikely, unless he really didn't care for his brother all too much. And unlike Bottles, who taught you moves for free, Jam Jars requires you have collected a given number of notes in order to unlock new moves, which comes off as a bit unnecessary and counterproductive considering the life or death situation that the whole island is facing during the events of Tui. His military background and willingness to help the duo does go to show that he's an overall good guy, but he's just too cold and nasty to everybody else to justify putting him any higher. Master Jiggy Wiggy, the leader of the Jiggy Priests, falls into a similar morally gray area as Jam Jars thanks to his restriction of the duo during a great time of crisis. We get it, you're the head figure of your own temple and watch over this crystal jiggy relic which you can prey upon so that it can open the path to new worlds. But why do Banjo and Kazooie need to prove themselves worthy of unlocking a new world every time when it becomes very clear that they're more than capable? That big o blaster is going to kill everyone on the Isle of Hags and time is of the essence. But by all means, advertise your McDonald's ripoff some more. Sure, he's a wise man who only uses his mystical powers for good and only provides help to the pair, but he likely could have opened all the gates on the first go, but decided not to for whatever reason. Not cool, Jigsaw. Arriving at one of the more helpful characters, we get the living spellbook, Cheeto. Gruntilda's levitating spellbook has access to lots of cheat codes ranging from useful stuff like doubling your carrying capacity or letting you passively regenerate health to truly broken skills like homing eggs, infinite resources, or complete invincibility. With that said, he's willing to help out those who can find him, meaning that he's theoretically willing to help anybody regardless of alignment. Thankfully, his tricks keep falling into our hero's hands, and the fun these cheats bring to the table are certainly worth appreciating. Another one of Grunty's rebelling minions is her animated cauldron, Dingpot. Likely the most abused of her workforce, Dingpot is forced to take a lot of crap from her boss. This includes smashing down upon him, letting Dandra fall into him, and using him as a makeshift washing machine, as well as garbage can, bar bag, and toilet. By the end of Kazooie, he's had enough of her awful treatment and provides the two the boost they need to get to the top of the tower. You deserve far better treatment, Dingpot. Maybe the Horned King provides some workplace benefits. Our next character is the first and last representative from Nuts and Bolts, LOG, otherwise known as Lord of Games. Nuts and Bolts isn't really a bad game, it's just not a good banjo game, and we have this guy to thank for that. LOG is portrayed as an omnipotent god in the Banjo-Kazooie universe who is responsible for creating every video game ever made. He's not what you would call a benign god, though as he's prone to bragging, has a pretty bloated ego, and calls the main characters things like has-beens, second ray, and even failures. All because they aren't as successful as Mario. Yeah, it isn't too hard to hate him. That said, he does act as a mostly unbiased party between Gruntilda and the protagonists and works to settle their rivalry once and for all. He could just stand to be a bit more pleasant to listen to. Moving on to the evildoers, we begin with Klungo. The Igor-inspired assistant to Gruntilda, Klungo might seem like all brawn and no brains with his large size, ugly face, and speech impediment, but he's responsible for designing a fair share of the machines that Gruntilda uses, including the beauty swap machine machine in the first game and the Mecha Grundy suit in Grunty's Revenge. He shows far more loyalty to his boss than either Dingpot or Cheeto did and even takes on Banjo and Kazooie directly in Tui by relentlessly stalling their progress and three separate boss encounters. What does put him lower than the other villains is that he does finally abandon Grunty by the end of Tui when he gets sick of her poor treatment of him. By nuts and bolts, we see that he's taken up game design as a new career with his smash hit indie game, Hero Klungo Saves the World. What a Cinderella story this turned out to be. For a practically identical tie for runner-up of most evil characters, we have Blabelda and Mangela. The evil sisters of Gruntilda and Bruntilda meant 
more to get the plot going in Tui than be threatening themselves. These two release Grunty from her boulder prison and take her to the Big O Blaster, a machine capable of extracting the life from other living beings. With the goal of using that extracted energy to create a new body for a now withered away Gruntilda. They have no qualms going along with Gruntilda's plans to blast the entire island just for kicks, so they're undeniably evil, but they're a bit lacking in personality otherwise, even in traits to help differentiate the two. And to no one's shock, the most evil character in Banjo Kazooie is the wicked witch Gruntilda. Now, we love Gruntilda, she's a strong contender for the funniest character in the series with how often she chimes in to make fun of Banjo and Kazooie, as well as brag about herself or just make some entertaining fourth wall breaks. But despite how often she's used for comedy, she's a universally reviled character in the series. Her plans include kidnapping Tootie to steal her beauty, using a robotic suit to go back in time and ensure Banjo and Kazooie never meet, using the Big O Blaster to wipe out all life on the Isle of Hags just because she can when she only needed to blast a few people just to get her body back, and becoming the sole owner of Spiral Mountain by defeating her lifetime furry foes in LOG's various challenges. What a resume. She lives a vile lifestyle if all the gross secrets Brentilda tells you are any indication. Her standards for public and workplace safety and cleanliness are practically non-existent considering the status of Witchy World and Grunty Industries, and she shows no kindness to anyone across the series, be it capturing the Jinjos, backstabbing Mumbo, or murdering Bottles. The worst part is that she seems to be just as bad to the ones closest to her. We've already seen how poorly she treats Dingpot earlier, but she also beats the crap out of Klungo each time he's beaten by the duo and rips most of Cheeto's pages after giving out cheat codes. Not even her own family is exempt from her wrath, considering she kills off Labelda and Mangella during the Tower of Tragedy quiz game in Tui. We love her rhymes from dawn till dusk, but her morals are as putrid as her musk. That's our ranking. Disagree with us? Let us know in the comments. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge our Good to Evil playlist, where we break down the morality of your favorite games. But most importantly, stay wicked.